Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're going to look at how we're going to combine the topics of algebraic division and partial fractions so we can answer questions from exercise 1 F slash G. Now in what we've done so far in this series of videos is splitting up fractions like this 22 over 35 into their parts. We look at the denominator, what factors do we have on the denominator, in this case 5 and 7 and we split them up into part fractions uh, with 5 and 7 on the denominator. Now what we're going to do in this uh, next video uh, coming up is having a look at this type of fraction here where we have a top heavy fraction. Um, so what we're going to do first is effectively split this fraction here up into 40 over 20, add 17 over 20, and then split 17 over 20 into its parts. So effectively what we're going to have here is 2 plus and then 17 over 20 will be split into a quarter add 3 fifths. Okay. So this is effectively um, in numbers what we're going to be doing here. So we need to do a bit of algebraic division first and then look at what the remainder is. In this case it was 17 and then split up 17 over 20 as a fraction. So let's have a look at uh, an easy example first and then a harder example second. Now in this case here, what we've got to split up is 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 all over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now in algebraic terms, if we have an improper or top heavy fraction, then that means that we have an equal or bigger power of x on the numerator than we do on the denominator. And you can see in this expression here we've got x squared on the top, x squared on the bottom, so this counts as a top heavy fraction. Now in this case it's quite easy to sort this one out because they're equal. Effectively if you just look at the x squared terms it's going to be 3x squared divided by x squared, so you can effectively kind of cancel out the x squareds, so you know it's going to be 3 at the start of your answer. <clears throat> But it is important to work out what we get left over as a remainder next. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out 3 from the x squared and also all of the terms from the denominator. So if you see in this bracket here it's equal to the denominator. I've made that happen. So in this case here x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then where does the 6x minus 8 come from? Well it's just me looking at what I've got and then adjusting it to make the numerator equivalent. So effectively here I've got 3 times minus 3x, that's minus 9x. I want to minus 3x, I need to add on 6 more x's to balance this out, balance the numerators out so they're equivalent. And I've got 3 times 2 which is 6, but I really want minus 2, so I need to subtract 8 to balance out the numerators from one fraction to another. <clears throat> and then in doing this, what I can then write is that our fraction 3x squared minus 3x over 2, blah, 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 uh, is equal to 3, because we can effectively cancel out here and here, but we can't cancel out the 6x minus 8 over this. Okay. So, <clears throat> effectively what we've done here is the division and 6x minus 8 is our remainder. Now that's a bit of a short way of doing it, a bit of a cheeky way of doing it, in the next example, we'll see how you can do it in another way. So now all we've got to do is split up this 6x minus 8 over x minus 1, x minus 2. So what we'll do then is we'll split into partial fractions, put the fraction back together, and then equate numerators. So 6x minus 8 equals a x minus 2 plus b x minus 1. Substituting x equals 2, and we get b is 4. Substituting x equals 1, and we get a is 2. So our final answer to this question here, to split up this expression here into partial fractions, we have 3 at the front with no fraction on it. It's just the whole value 3, plus and then our partial fractions. So we've worked out the partial fractions of this term here um, that we had left over when we divided through by 3. So it's 2 over x minus 1 plus 4 over x minus 2. Okay. 
Let's have a look at a slightly more difficult example now. So in this case here, we've got 2x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 13 over x plus 1, x minus 2. Um, and what we want to do is split this into partial fractions. Now, if we look at the numerator and denominator highest power, in this case, we've got an x cubed on the top and on the bottom, we've got an x squared. So in this case here, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a bit of algebraic division. So expand your denominator and we're effectively now doing 2x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 13 all over x squared minus x minus 2. So set up your box method. So effectively what we want to find is what times is by x squared minus x and minus 2 to make our numerator. So how do we do this method? Just a reminder then, so 2x cubed goes in the top left hand cell. So what does that mean we need on the top? It times this together to make this 2x cubed with the x squared term here. So on the top here, I need 2x. And what do I get in all of these other positions then? Well, I'm going to get minus 2x squared and minus 4x. <clears throat> now, what I need to now look at next is the next highest power along. And in this case, it's x squared. At the moment, I've got minus 2x squared. So I would quite like to add on 3x squared to get this back up to x squared. So in this top right hand cell here, I need to add 3x squared. What do I need on the top to make this 3x squared? I need a 3. Expand out all the other terms and we get minus 3x and minus 6. And that's all we've got left, that's all we've got room for really. So now the rest of this question is just going to be a remainder. Now looking at the x term here, I, at the moment I've got minus 7x's. So in order to get me from minus 7x up to x, I need to add on 8x's. And very similar for this minus 6 term here, I actually want minus 13. So I'm going to need to subtract 7 to balance this out. So my remainder is 8x minus 7. So what I can then write is that if I'm doing 2x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 13 all over x squared minus x minus 2, is this is equal to 2x plus 3, so we've divided it fully, and then effectively the remainder is 8x minus 7 over x plus 1, x minus 2. It's effectively the same as that question that we had at the start, 57 over 20. We split this into 2, because that was 40 over 20, plus 17 over 20. Okay, so effectively this bit here has come from doing 57 divided by 20. And then our leftover was 17, and effectively our leftover here is 18x minus 7. And then you put it over a fraction of your denominator, so it's over the same fraction here of your denominator. And this is the same as x minus x plus 1, x minus 2. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've done half the question, let's now go ahead and split this up into partial fractions. So we've got 2x plus 3 plus 8x minus 7 over x plus 1, x minus 2. So the first thing we'll do then is split into their parts, put the uh, fractions back together again, and create equal numerators. Substitute in sneaky values of x. And we get A is 5, B is 3. So now all that's left for us to do is write out our final answer, which is 2x plus 3 plus 5 over x plus 1 add 3 over x minus 2. Okay, so in these types of questions here, you need to do a bit of algebraic division first. Work out what your divisor is, work out what your remainder is, and your remainder is going to go on the top of the fraction with the same denominator as you had previously. So remember, this was my remainder when I did that algebraic division. And then what you have to do is split that remainder over your fraction, over your denominator into partial fractions. Okay? All right, then your turn to have some practice then. So pause the video and try this question here out.
Alright then, so well done for having a go at this question here then. Now the first thing for us to have a go at is the algebraic division part. I'm going to do it by the box method. If you have an alternative method, then please do feel free to use it. I'm going to be dividing x squared minus x, because that's what I get when I expand this denominator, by x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 3. Now the first term, the highest power of x I've got is x cubed. So the term I'm going to need up on the top here is an x. Timesing out down the bottom, I get a minus x squared. And I would actually quite like minus x squared. So in fact, I don't need anything more here. And if I don't want anything more there, I have nothing more here. And I have nothing more here. Okay. So in fact, this question here is going to look like x plus... Now, what was my remainder? I'll have minus x and minus 3. So it's going to be x plus minus x minus 3 all over x, x minus 1. And what we can now start to do, now that we've done the algebraic division part, is to now do the partial fractions part. So we're going to simplify this into a over x plus b over x minus 1. Okay, let's just sort this uh, a over x plus b over x minus 1 stuff out. What we can now do is effectively say that um, minus x minus 3 is going to equal a times x minus 1, if we were to put the two fractions back together again, and b of x, like that. So let's start to substitute in sneaky values of x. So we'll start with x equals 1. So this is going to give me minus 4 equals 1b. So b is minus 4. And x is equal to 0. So minus 3 equals minus a. So a here equals 3. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what we now have is our final answer. Our final answer is x plus uh, 3 over x minus 4 over x minus 1. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here then. So... Hopefully that made sense. Um, it's it's two questions in one, effectively. It's a very common that this will appear in, a, in an A-level exam because it's a nice way for them to test your algebraic division skills as well as your partial fraction skills. Okay? And this question here is a little bit more tricky because there was no um, constant term when we did our algebraic division, but we have to be aware of those situations when it does happen. Alright then, thanks very much for watching this video. We've got plenty of exercises in exercise 1G and in the mixed exercise at the end of the chapter. So make sure you revise thoroughly um, and uh, had lots of practice at these types of questions. Okay, thanks very much for watching this video.